Well, good evening, Trinity Baptist Church. Glad you joined us again tonight. Hope you had a good uh, afternoon. And uh, we're going to do some singing. And uh, we have a couple of specials tonight and uh, two or three congregationals before we get to the message. And so we're looking forward to uh, worshiping the Lord together. And uh, you've got to pray for me now, church. Uh, this week, uh, my hairstylist, uh, they shut down her office. And so there's no telling what I'm going to grow in the next month. Uh, actually, it's a blessing because Sarah has uh, been to school and uh, done, got a little bit of training. So I'm, I'm trying to practice living by faith. And uh, so I may have a mohawk next Sunday morning. I don't know. She may do that just to be funny. Uh, but uh, I get a haircut just about every week uh, like clockwork. And so uh, this is going to be a new experiment uh, for me. Uh, and then also, uh, I know many of you have been praying uh, you know, for me, uh, it's it's been a month now since I've been able to go to tamales and uh, sit down and have lunch, and it's it's starting to be a struggle. I'm getting the shakes, I'm getting headaches, and uh, so you you keep praying for me, I keep praying for you, and uh, but uh, no, uh, let's sing together. Looking forward to uh, what God's going to do in our heart tonight, and so let's sing. We're going to sing uh, page number three twenty three, standing on the promises, and let's sing all those verses together, uh, Brother Joshua, and then I'll come back and we'll ha we'll open up in prayer. Man, all right. I asked Brother Trent uh, to come up this tonight and help uh, Joshua and Sarah sing, and I've also asked him to come up and pray for us uh, right now to start the service. And uh, you pray for these guys. They, uh, you know, were they had their schedule in college and were going to classes, and some of them had, uh, you know, kind of friends from Louisiana that were female. And, uh, and, and, they, and then all of a sudden it all got shut down. And so uh, Lone Star Baptist College sent him home. He's been doing his college work uh, up here uh, online. And uh, I, from time to time from my office, I hear a little whimpering. And I'm not sure what it is, but uh, uh, anyways, I'm not sure that he misses the classes as much as he maybe misses individuals. I, I'm not sure about that. But uh, anyways, it's tough on these uh, college students. Sarah, of course, was in uh, Knoxville at Crown and was just home for spring break. And then everything shut down at once. And so she left, lost her uh, 
job, lost her uh, friends there at school and her school or her classes, the professors that she loved. And so it's been a change for uh, these guys. But God has a plan. God has a purpose. And uh, I believe that they're going to use this uh, in life to, to learn from it, look back one day and know that God did that for specific reasons for them as well as we as we all look to see uh, down the road why God allowed that in our life and so you pray for these uh, college students uh, as uh, their their world has been changed a little bit but brother Trent you come and open us open us up in uh, prayer tonight let's pray dear Lord thank you for this day and thank you for the privilege to still have church uh, even though uh, with all that's going on with the virus lord thank you for the fact we're able to have live stream lord and we can still uh, gather together as a church family uh, and i pray lord that you uh, bless the service tonight lord use preach as he preaches give us what we need uh, help us to hear from heaven tonight from uh, from our living rooms lord and that we will listen and uh, take it seriously lord and i pray lord that you would uh, help this uh, virus lord i pray you just uh, you would heal our land and that you would take it away so we can get back to normal, Lord. I definitely uh, can't wait for the time when we can all meet together once again here in this auditorium, Lord, and have service like normal and, and be able to sing like normal and, and uh, hear our preacher preach in person, Lord, instead of on a TV screen, although we are thankful that we can still do that. Uh, and I just can't wait to be able to see the buses once again be rolling and picking up kids and us seeing you work in our midst, seeing people saved and, and people helped. And I just pray you just uh, help us through this time, Lord, just help the many people that uh, have been stuck at home, Lord, and those who have been uh, losing hours uh, with their jobs and uh, just many different things going on, Lord, those who may be sick uh, from, from either the virus or maybe from other sicknesses, other health issues that they're dealing with, I just pray uh, your hand would be upon them, Lord. And uh, just, uh, just help our church family, help us to reach out to each other and to check in uh, on one another, Lord. And uh, I pray that we would stay encouraged and that we'd draw close, uh, closer to you because of this and that we would just be uh, Christians that are on fire for God when this is all said and done, Lord, and uh, that we'd be different and be changed in a, in, a, in a good way, a positive way, Lord. Just bless the service tonight, the singing and all that goes on. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Amen. Let me give you a few announcements. I would uh, encourage you to continue to pray for uh, one another. And uh, some of you have some church phone lists, and you're able to go down that list. I know others of you, especially the deacons, uh, and I think the advisory board, they have the shepherding the flock list. So you have the names of folks in our church, and and uh, don't forget about uh, one another. Uh, we had several different folks stop by today after church to drop off their offerings, and uh, I was able to walk them out and show them uh, the gymnasium and talk a little bit about it. It. And uh, it almost in, a, almost in a way seems like we're strangers already just two or three weeks into it, uh, just having not seen each other for a while. So I would encourage you to call one another as uh, church members, communicate with one another, and uh, let us know again uh, still if you uh, have a need. Uh, we want to know about that. We want to meet that need the best we can. I realize that right now is probably not the best time for us to sit and uh, talk, uh, but if you need advice or counseling or whatever, feel free to call me and uh, we'll certainly help you uh, as we uh, can. We are looking for the gymnasium uh, to be delivered uh, this week, supposed to be tomorrow, so maybe if you drive by you'll see it. Someone asked, how do you, how do you drop off a building? Well, if you've ever seen a storage building going down the road on the back of a trailer, that's what they do. The two-story gymnasium, they put it on about four diesels at the same time and bring it down the highway, and uh, then they stop real fast, kids, and the building just slides off of the... I'm just joking. Uh, they'll bring all of the steel, and uh, it's like you kids building some kind of a fort or some kind of a, a Lincoln Logs or a, a Legos or whatever. They'll bring all of the little pieces, and then they'll just start putting it together. So we're looking forward to that uh, perhaps happening this week. Again, on Wednesday night, we'll have our service at 7, and then we'll stop and we'll have that conference call, and we have uh, fixed uh, some of the issues uh, that we were having with uh, some sound all on that, and so we'll give you on Wednesday during the day, we'll send out some information on the number to call and the access code to get onto that uh, conference call and uh, so uh, if if you've had a problem with that if you will let me know 
uh, I'll set up a private call with you and let you practice ahead of time on how to get onto that uh, uh, that call that night. So if you'll let me know that preacher, I just can't figure out how to get on this thing. Call me, and uh, we will uh, help you to figure that uh, out. We certainly want you to be on that call on Wednesday night. That was a sweet time of fellowship this past week, and I think it'll be better this uh, this coming Wednesday night. We will share some information with you uh, this week about Easter Sunday. We'll tell you a little bit more during the week. Uh, we don't plan on gathering together. We don't plan on having uh, uh, drive up church or drive through church. There's some different ideas being thrown around, and uh, and that's wonderful. And I'm glad it works for some people. We're just going to keep it simple. And uh, but uh, we would like to have some sort of a meet and greet, Miss Audie and I, uh, with the the families. And so we'll we're working on some ideas, and we will let you know about that uh, this. Uh, week and we'll let you, um, you parents know more in a private setting, uh, phone call wise, what we want to uh, do there uh, for for Easter. Uh, I did want to remind you again uh, of the the baby shower coming up. Uh, the Moors are having a baby, so congratulations. I'll let that sink in for just a second with Brother Greg. And then I'll remind, he, he just woke up from his nap. But uh, uh, no, uh, Mark and Kylie Moore having a baby. And uh, their baby shower was scheduled for, I think, April 23rd, 24th, somewhere in there. And so uh, we can't do that, can't gather together. But they are doing a drive-through baby shower. And those invitations, I think, will hit the mail this week if they haven't already. So if you're a church member, you should be receiving an invitation and some instructions uh, on uh, that. And uh, then speaking of, speaking of, speaking of, I have something here. And I want to read to you tonight. Let's see here. Here is what the note says. With four little kids, we know life is crazy. But we love it so much, God gave us another baby. I think that was supposed to rhyme. I read it like it was supposed to rhyme. But uh, I want to say congratulations to the Kettner family. They have a... Another child on the way, and they are welcoming, it says here, they said it, I didn't, they are welcoming thing number five in December 2020, and they even have a shirt, thing number five. It's nearly my, my size. Actually, I think that's a full body suit, so I, I won't try that one out. But anyways, congratulations, Brother and Mrs. Kettner. And uh, so between the Parkers, the Wagners, the Kettners, uh, they will all have five children now. So we are now looking to see who will come up with that sixth child and, uh, and be the first there. But uh, congratulations, uh, Sean and Katrina. And uh, you kids, congratulations on your brand new baby thing, because we don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. So um, if it's a girl, then mom could bleach this and it'll be pink. If it's a boy, I guess we can keep it red. But congratulations on thing number five. You said it. I didn't say it. But uh, congratulations to the Kettners on, uh, on that new baby. And we're glad that you shared that information with us uh, today. Uh, I want to mention also, uh, if you find out again that there is someone who cannot uh, get online for the services. Uh, we can, I think this week, we can make it happen where they can begin to call into a phone number and at least listen to our services. So if you find that out, please, would you let me know that as soon as possible in the uh, early part of this week so that we can work on that process and see if we can't get that uh, set up by Wednesday night or at least by next Sunday morning. I think we can uh, take care of that. So let me know that uh, if you would, please. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, this to you, and really it's the last uh, announcement, um, and 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 it, and it you know you could say it's none of my business. I, I really just want to say it as a as a as a caring pastor or as a you know a counselor, I guess. But I, I think in the next week or two, the first stimulus checks are going to start being sent out. Uh, I, I would not count your chickens before they hatch. I would not begin to write checks on that thing. Uh, there, there, there is some. There are some instructions online as to who will and will not receive that. But my, you know, my parents taught me not to count your chickens before they hatch. So I, I you know, 
whether or not you receive one. But I would just tell you as pastor, I would just tell you as a, as a, as a counselor, uh, be smart about that. Be smart. They, they're not sending that out so we can go buy. And, I, and I'm not trying again. It's your business at the end of the day. But they're not sending that so we can go out and br- buy a brand new big screen TV. Or they're, not, they're not sending that so we can go out and, uh, you know, let's be smart. And if rents do or mortgages do or we're, we're behind on bills, this is just my opinion. And uh, I know many, many people are losing their jobs. And we want to help you as a church family. If you lose your job or you get cut back in hours later, let me know. We want to help you uh, somehow, some way. Uh, but, you know, there's this trend right now to, to, well, you know, the cell phone company should give us three free months and the electric company should give us three free months and the bank should give us three free months and, and it's all free, free, free and, and there, there's no free lunch, number one. Uh, you're going to pay it back eventually, but what about those people that are actually providing that service for you? Uh, where, do, where do they get their, their money from? Where do they get their supply from? So let, let's not get caught up in that. If, if you get a deferred on a loan payment or something. Hey, thank God for it. It's a blessing. Maybe it'll help you in this time. I do understand it's some tight times, but may we not as Christians get caught up in this. What can I get for free uh, next? And if you are benefited by getting a stimulus check, uh, then uh, use it. Use it wisely. All right. That is your parental advice uh, for the night. Uh, But uh, hey, uh, if I get one, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tithe off of it because it wasn't mine to begin with. And if God gives me uh, $20. I, I owe him $2. And so that's what we're going to do uh, in, in our home. All right. Just want to give you that little piece of advice. You could take it or leave it and uh, that, that would be fine. Let's sing another song. And uh, Joshua, you come and we are going to sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, page number oh, 285, I think, if I could read my handwriting right. Let's sing Leaning on the Everlasting Lo- Arms. And I'm going to lead us in one song as they get ready to sing their special. And in fact, uh, when we're done with this song, uh, they are going to, uh, Brother Trent, Brother Joshua, Miss Sarah, they are going to sing two songs uh, back to back. And then we'll get into the message uh, tonight. And uh, page number 376. I've walked away from my notes, but I believe it's 1 Samuel 13 is where we'll start tonight. 1 Samuel 13. And if I'm wrong about that, you'll at least get in the range there in the region. But 1 Samuel 13, I believe, is what it will be. You know this song. Sing this with me. Those of you that are sitting in here, just a handful of us. It's page number 376. I know who holds tomorrow. And uh, let's sing these three verses together. And then uh, these guys and girls will sing a couple of uh, specials for us. Skies me. 
they turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today he walks beside me, for he knows what is ahead. Listen as they sing.
looking for me. He made a way when there was no way that I could see. When I drifted far, Jesus was near to rescue my soul and call my fears. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. that they find Jesus never fails Even in the days of old He brought His people through And then He came to show His love And died for me and you Then He rose again to prove That every story has been true Amen. That's good. I don't care who you are. That is good uh, preaching and singing right there. Take your Bible tonight. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 13. 1 Samuel chapter number uh, 13. And um, thankful for these guys singing. I also want to say that I'm thankful for uh, the sound guys and helping us out and uh, Brother Cunningham and uh, Brother Tim, Brother Parker, and uh, doing the work that they've been uh, doing. Um, this morning I preached, I think I preached quite a while, and I was joking with these guys on the way out the door, 
Well, I was only halfway joking, but I said, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to get people too used to those little 30-minute sermons, and so I've got to keep preaching a while and get them used to what I, I normally do. It's that Ogdi blood that runs in me, uh, that Carl Ogdi blood. But uh, So I preached a while. I said, now you guys... Brother Tim, Brother Joe, Brother Cunningham, you guys ought to be able to bring some breakfast with you or something because at least, at least all your buddies at home, they get to sit on the couch and relax during that long period of time. You guys are sitting here. And, uh, but I do appreciate the work that they're doing. And you could just tell they're putting effort into what they do because every, every service, uh, I, I get texts from folks that the quality is better. The, 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 the uh, screen, uh, the, the visual, if you will, is, is better. The picture is better. Uh, the volume, uh, the sound is, is, is improving. And uh, so we're not looking to be Hollywood. We're not looking to be the most professional independent Baptist church when it comes to media. Uh, but uh, we do want you to focus on the words to songs like that. And that was beautiful sitting in this auditorium. I hope it was at your home uh, also. And I appreciate again them uh, singing tonight. And I appreciate the guys and the work that they're doing to help us get through uh, this time. All right, 1 Samuel chapter number 13. 1 Samuel chapter number 13, while you're finding your place there, if you haven't already, I uh, got to thinking again about, I guess that is the third baby now that, uh, um, that we'll be uh, due in our, in our church family uh, this year, I believe it's this year, uh, Mark and Kylie, and then uh, Taylor and Cade, and uh, then uh, Sean and Katrina. Now, we knew there would be a baby boom uh, during, this, uh, during this virus, during this crisis, everyone being shut in. And uh, so, Brother Kettner, thumbs up to you. You're the first one to get that kicked off in our church. The other two couples were already uh, expecting. And, of course, any time that we announce that a couple is having a baby, I always like to celebrate also uh, because, as the song says, how sweet to hold a newborn baby. And then the, I, I changed the second part of that verse to and uh, give it back to its mom and dad. So uh, it's, uh, it's with a 15-year-old and a 19-year-old. Uh, it's just good to know that I'm not the one giving that announcement that Ms. Audi and I have a child on the way. So I know some of you keep praying in that, in that, in that form and God will get you one day because of that. Uh, but uh, congratulations again to all three of you couples. And uh, that's exciting for our new nursery and our new gymnasium. Your kids will grow up in that uh, gymnasium and uh, just going to be wonderful. So congratulations, uh, Sean and Katrina, on that announcement of the thing. You said it. I didn't say it. The thing that is on its way in uh, December. 1 Samuel chapter number 13. We're just going to read two verses and then we'll pray and get into the middle of the, uh, into, into the message. 1 Samuel 13 and verse number 1. Uh, the Bible says that Saul reigned one year. And when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, uh, whereof 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his uh, tent. Now I want to preach tonight a message that the Lord laid on my heart, and it was probably, it may have been last Sunday night as I began to think about these uh, online services, and we had been doing that for a couple of weeks at that point. Now, I guess this is the third week that we've uh, done this, and, and it, it, thinking of it led me to this, uh, this, the thought of this message, and, uh, and I want to preach on tonight when new gets old, or when the new wears off, when new gets old. Let's pray together. Lord, would you uh, bless our time together in your word tonight? And Lord, I pray that we'll not forget the truth of your word this morning. And you said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. And I, I pray, God, that we'll continue to let that thought sink in uh, throughout this week and continue to examine our own uh, life and where we are. And uh, Lord, that, that we may walk with a spirit of humility and, uh, and walk humbly before you and before others and be a servant to, to others. Lord, tonight I pray as we look at some things in our life that are they're wonderful when they're new and they're fresh, but perhaps tonight there are some areas of our life that have kind of gotten cold and kind of grown old. And I pray tonight that we'll find a way from your word to remedy that uh, situation. Help us tonight. We'll thank you for what you'll do in our hearts and we'll ask it in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Uh, in our text, Saul, King Saul, 
is uh, still relatively new uh, in his reign. Uh, Saul was chosen as the first uh, earthly king of Israel. Of course, God was their king, and God desired to be their king, but the children of Israel desired to be like every other nation, and they uh, asked the man of God, Samuel, that, uh, that they could have a, a king, and, and God said, hey, you know, they've rejected me as their king. Let's, let's give them an earthly king and see how much they like that. And so their first king, the first king of Israel, was uh, King Saul. He's been in it uh, now for about a year according to our text and I believe that in that first year as king, I believe that uh, King Saul was honored to be king. I, I believe that he was humbled by it and, and I believe that King Saul was even intimidated uh, by the thought of uh, being king. Let's look at where I take that thought, those thoughts from. Look at chapter 9 and verse number 17. As the man of God is going, as, as God commanded Samuel to go and and. and, and and choose Saul uh, to be king. Uh, let's look at the reaction from Saul. In 1 Samuel 9 and verse number 17. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake to thee of, uh, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul, and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today and tomorrow. I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and on thy father's house? And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? Look at chapter 10 and verse number 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over uh, his inheritance? So the man of God anointed Saul to be king uh, at, that, uh, at that moment uh, privately. Look at chapter 10 there in verse number 9. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, that God gave him, gave Saul another heart, and those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Uh, look at uh, chapter 10, look at verse number 17. And Samuel uh, called the people together unto the Lord to Mizpah, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms, and of them that oppressed you. And you have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations. And you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. And when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of uh, Matri was taken. And Saul the son of Kish was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him, uh, <coughs> excuse me, whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Look at chapter 11, 11 there and uh, verse number 12. Chapter 11 and verse number 12. The Bible says, And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said Saul shall reign over us? Uh, bring the men that we may put them uh, to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death uh, this day. There shall not a man be put to death uh, this day. 
So as you read over those handful of chapters, 9 through 12, you see that it seemed like as Saul was being chosen to be the king, uh, that uh, he was humble about it. He was intimidated about being the king and, and that uh, perhaps he was honored to serve uh, as the uh, brand new and the first king uh, of Israel. But as you come to our text in chapter 13 and verse number 1, there seems to be a pivotal moment when perhaps the new got old. The first year seemed fine. But in the second year, we see King Saul disobeying God by attempting to step into the office of the prophet. Again, verse number 1 of chapter 13. Saul reigned one year. And when he had reigned two years over Israel... In chapter 13, the Philistines had gathered an innumerable army against Israel. And King Saul and his men were afraid for their lives. Look at verse number 5. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Beth Haven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, in a, in a difficult situation, a stressful situation, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in uh, thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. So the Philistines had gathered themselves together against the Hebrews, against the people uh, of Israel, against uh, Saul's people, if you will. Well, a week went by. And Saul was waiting on Samuel. He was waiting on the man of God to show up uh, to offer a sacrifice and to give some direction to Saul and to Israel. In verse number 8, And he, Saul, tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So King Saul decides to violate the Levitical law by trying to take the place of the man of God. Saul was not of the tribe of Levi. He was not of the lineage of Aaron. Yet he willingly disobeyed the word of God. Look at verse number 12. Or verse number, verse number 9. And Saul said, bring me hither a burnt offering to me. And a peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. That, that, that was not Saul's job. That was Samuel's job. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I, I forced myself, making all kinds of excuses. He says, I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. And so we see here that it only took a year. Out of uh, Saul's 40 years of reigning as king, it only took one year before he began to uh, disobey uh, God. Now, you've heard the saying, you've heard the saying, it is never right to do wrong to do right. It's, it's never right to disobey God, uh, no matter what you think the end result uh, might be. Uh, the end does not always justify the means. For example... You may have someone, and sometimes we'll have someone that'll joke with us, uh, and something like this. They say, well, preacher, I, I'm going to play the lottery, but don't worry, I'll tithe off of it. The end does not justify the means. It's never right to do wrong, uh, to do right. And it's a slap in the face to God uh, to play lottery and gamble uh, and not trust God to supply all of your needs. Another example may be, well, you know, preacher, I, I know that I need to be in church and I know that I should be there, but I, I volunteered uh, to work overtime. But, but no problem, tr preacher, because, you know, I'll be able to give more uh, if I work that voluntary overtime. Friend, listen, again, it's 
It's never right to do wrong to do right. We have to do right and trust God uh, with the results. So Saul disobeyed God. And, and he, not only did he disobey God, but as, there, as is the case with all of us, he paid the price for his disobedience. Look at verse number 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So in my view, the first year seemed great. But when it kind of became old hat to him, when, when some time had passed, when the new became old, that's when it seems to me that Saul began to make bad choices. We're talking about when the new gets old. Now this is not the message tonight, but this is the thought that instigated the message in my heart this week. The first few online services were new to us all. And we sat up and we listened and we focused and, and we were ready uh, for what the Lord had for us. But after a few services, I'm afraid that the new might get old. And let me encourage you to make every online service of your church important. Treat it the same. Prepare the same. Say amen. Sit on the edge of your seat. Stay awake and let God do the work in your heart that he wants to do. Don't let the new wear off and cause you to make online services uh, any less important. Now that's just a side note. That's just, again, the kind of the thought that my, my concern with our church family that instigated the thought for the message as a whole. Now, let me give you the message, and I hope that it's a help to you uh, tonight. Here it is. If we are not careful, the new will get old in marriage. The new will get old in parenting. The new will get old in our college work. The new will get old at our job. The new will get old at our church. The new will get old in our church ministry. Perhaps even the new will get old in our, with our salvation. What did, what did David ask God? He said, he didn't say restore my salvation. Thank God that once saved, always saved. Thank God uh, uh, that there is therefore now no condemnation to them uh, which are in Christ Jesus. Thank God that nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Thank God that, uh, that Jesus said no man shall be able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Uh, we cannot lose our salvation. But if we're not careful, we'll lose the newness of our salvation. And David said, Lord, restore unto me the, the joy of thy salvation. I, I want it to feel fresh again. I want to be excited about the fact that I'm saved once again. The new wore off. The old set in. You see, when things are new, it's like we're a new person. Look at, look at Saul with me again. And if you would look at chapter 10, chapter 10, and, and I think we read this a moment ago, but it's, it's worth repeating, all right? It's, it's new to him. And, and, uh, and, and he just got chosen. He just was anointed to be king in, in 1 Samuel 10 and, and verse number 6. And, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and, and shalt be turned into another man. And isn't that the case when things are new? It's like we're a new person. You think about people uh, when they first get married. And they've been married six weeks and they have all the answers and they're excited and nobody understands marriage like they do. And they're going to have a better marriage than uh, their parents ever thought about having. And they don't understand why folks have trouble and, and they don't understand where their arguments come from. And, and they're just so in love and, and boy, if they could just write a book six, six months into it, they'd tell, us, they'd tell us all how to have a happy marriage. Why? Because that's what happens and by the way, that ought to happen to an extent that you're so in love, you're so excited that, that, you just, that, that, that it just oozes out of you. Uh, you're that gross little couple because you're, just, you're so in love. But what, we're brand new. It's brand new to us. Think about brand new parents. That's so cute. I read that online sometimes. It's so cute when someone has their first child and starts lecturing everyone else about how parenting really works. 
And oh, we've heard all our lives that when you have kids, this and that changes and this and that and so forth. Isn't that cute? And they start lecturing all of us who've had kids for years about how, how they've got it all figured out and that baby's not three months old, but they've got it figured out. Why? Because when we have those brand new babies, we're like new people. We go to college and we, and we get involved in those classes and we, we learn that the process and the, and the program and it's new to us and, and we're excited about the work that we're uh, doing. And what about at our job? We go to our job and we're a new person. Man, hey, we're happy to be here. We didn't like the other place, but, but this place is good. We're a new person. I've seen this 20 years of pastoring. I'm in my 20th year and I've seen this over and over again that folks come to a new church and oh, oh pastor, uh, it's such a blessing to be here and, and we're excited to be here and oh, the singing is good and preacher, we, we just appreciate your message and, and we appreciate your stand and, and we appreciate the rules that the youth department has and oh, this is great because it's all new. Sometimes we do that in church ministry. We have all kinds of ideas because we're about to get on a bus route or we're about to start a bus church or we're about to teach a Sunday school class and, and we've got a year's worth of ideas for programs and, and uh, decorations and, 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 and how we're going to teach our class and how we're going to reach out to those young people and how we're going to have a fellowship here and there. And, and it's all good. Why? Because when, when, the new, when, when things are first new, it's like we're new people. This is wonderful. When things are new, it's like we're a new person. Let me say secondly, if you look at chapter 11 there. In chapter number 11, when things are new, we get along with everyone. Look at, look at verse number 12. When things are new, we get along with everyone. Verse number 12, again, people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, shall, shall Saul reign over us? What they, they had gotten on Saul's side at that point and they said, is there a crowd that's still questioning whether or not Saul ought to be our king? Hey, bring the men that we may put them to death. Now, if this would have been not new to Saul, but Saul down the road, Saul would have said, yeah, kill him. But it's still new to him. And so Saul says, there shall not a man be put to death this day. For today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. So I notice there, when things are new, we get along with everyone. Down the road, King Saul couldn't get along with it, anyone. He said, all of you have conspired uh, against me. And isn't that the case? That boy, things are new, and we're getting along in marriage. And things are new, and we're so excited to be parents. And things are new, and we get along with everyone at the college. And we we appreciate the teachers and, and we appreciate uh, the rules. Things are new at our job and we get along with our fellow employees. We get along with our supervisor. We get along with our boss. Things are new at church and, we're, and this will happen in a few weeks. We're just excited to be back so we're getting along with everyone. Things are new in our church ministry and we appreciate the team that's working around us. And so, man, it's like we're new people and, and we just, we're all getting along and this is wonderful. Not only that, but I notice that when things are new, we feel like we can handle anything that is thrown our way. Look back at chapter 11, look, look back to verse number 1. Chapter 11 and verse number 1 there in 1 Samuel. Saul is going to be presented with a problem. Now once you get past chapter number 13, it seems like every time Saul is presented with a problem, he cowers down. Every time he's presented with a problem, he, he gets worked up and riled up and he doesn't know what to do. But things are still new in the first few chapters. And in chapter number 11, he, he's presented with this problem. Look at verse 1. Then Nahash and Ammonite, the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coast of Israel. And then if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. Now I promise you if you do a study on Saul after chapter 13, Saul would be right there weeping with them. Right there fearful with them. 
But things are still new and he feels like he can handle anything that is thrown his way. Verse 5. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard these things, those tidings. And, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he, he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces. And sent them throughout all the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. But when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah 30,000. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall you say unto the men of Jabesh-Gilead, Tomorrow by that, by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. And so you had the Ammonites that came up against uh, Israel, and some of them uh, were discouraged, and they were scared, and uh, they thought they were going to lose their right eye. And Saul said, hey, you're going to have help uh, by the time the sun gets hot tomorrow. We're going to be there for you. Why? Because when things were new, uh, Saul felt like he was a new person. Uh, when, when things were new, Saul was getting along with everyone. When things were new, Saul felt like that he could handle anything thrown his way. And that's the way it is when things are new in our life. We get married and we think, oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. And there'll never be any trouble. There'll never be any stress. We can handle it. We'll be fine. We begin to have children and we think, oh, this is wonderful. And we have the answers and we think, oh, this is not hard at all. And we can handle anything thrown our way. The, the same thing happens at our jobs. Oh, this is going to be the best place of employment ever. The other place I couldn't get along with anyone and the boss was horrible. But this place, oh yeah, it's new right now. We're getting along with everyone. We can handle it. I mean, yeah, there's, some, there's some, maybe some, some negatives, but, but we can handle anything thrown our way. For the rest of the book, once you pass chapter 13 and verse number 1, Saul reigned one year. And when he had reigned two years over Israel, for the rest of the book, Saul is living defensively. He seems to be angry at everyone. And he is afraid and fearful in just about every situation that he faced. What happened? I believe one of the things that happened there in his life was the new got old. So, here's the question. Has the new gotten old in your life? Has the new gotten old in your marriage? It, it may have just taken a few, a few weeks, a few months. It, it, may, it may have taken a few years. And God says we're to live joyfully with the wife of our youth, and yet so many marriages today are living by the theme, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. That's not the way God intended on you uh, to live your life. Miss Ogden and I will be married uh, 21 years this Friday, April 10th, 21 years. She's got to be the most blessed woman on earth. You know, just say amen right there at your house. Sarah, don't look at your mama. You know the truth. But 21 years we've been married. And guess what? It doesn't, it's, it's not always easy. And, and it's not always uh, laughter. And it's not always just, uh, you know, everything is wonderful and great. It, you work through the tough times. You, you work through the hard times. But may we not let our marriages get old and just let it go and, and, and become roommates uh, rather than one uh, in, in, in marriage. Has your marriage gotten old? Let me ask you this question. Has parenting gotten old? I mean, that, 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 that first baby you had and, and you, you got ready for your baby shower and you wanted 20 different thermometers and 14 different baby beds and, and you wanted five different baby baths and, and uh, you had it all worked out because you studied it online and, and you realized that all those babies that came before yours, they, they should have died because their mothers used the wrong bath or the wrong Tylenol or they turned the baby bed toward the sun when it should have been away from the... I mean, you did all of this studying and you had that baby and you brought that baby home and it was wonderful and you put the security guards around the baby and now it's like who will take them 
I just need a break. Somebody, please let us go back to church so someone will take my child and I can just sit here for a few minutes and talk to adults and talk to big people. Is parenting getting old in your life? Is your college work, is it getting old in your life? Hey, has it gotten old at your job? Is it, is it, is it you, were, you were excited about it, but now it's kind of, you're finding the negatives? What about at your church? Has, is it getting old? Have things gotten old at your church? In your church ministry? How about with your salvation? And, and there's just some topics I listed, but maybe in some other area of your life it was all new and, and, and you were a new person and you were excited and, and you were ready to face the world and it was all good and it was going to be good, but has the new worn off? Has the new gotten old in your life? So what do we do? What do we do when the new gets old? Let me give you four things quickly here that I see in Scripture. What do we do when the new gets old? And guess what? Sometimes in every area of our life, the new is going to wear out. Life's going to hit us hard. We're going to get tired. We're going to get weary. What can I do when the new has gotten old. Number one is this. Number one is this, build an altar. Build an altar. You see, we see in chapter 13 there, we see, in, in my view, in my opinion, we see that, that the new is worn off, the new has gotten old in, in Saul's life. And then we jump over to chapter 14 and notice what the Bible says in 1 Samuel 14 and verse number 35. The Bible says, and Saul built an altar unto the Lord. And notice, the same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. In over two years as a king, he, as king, he had not built a, a personal uh, altar. And I would say to all of us tonight that if the new has gotten old in some area of your life, hey, build an altar. You say, what is an altar? An altar is a place of worship. An altar is a place of communion with God and closeness with God. An altar is a place of prayer. If the new has gotten old, the first thing we need to do, as Jacob did in Genesis, is go back to Bethel. Spend time with the Lord and ask Him to restore the newness and the freshness and the joy to your heart once again. Jonah said this. He said, when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. What do we do when the new gets old? Number one, build an altar. Get along with God and say, God, I don't want to be this kind of spouse. God, I don't want to be this kind of parent. God, I don't want to be this kind of employee. I don't want to be this kind of uh, church member. God, I'm asking you, restore the joy. Restore the newness of my marriage and the freshness of my marriage. Uh, restore the freshness and the joy of being a parent to this little boy or this little girl. God, restore the, 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 the newness of my place of employment or the newness of my church or my church ministry once again what do we do when the new gets old number one build an altar number two is this keep obeying God keep obeying God you see what we can learn from Saul is not really what he did right but what he did wrong Saul failed in this area he continued to disobey God again and again and so we come up to 1 Samuel chapter number 15 and again, we see a man who's disobeying God. And we see a man in King Saul who is being confronted by the man of God. He disobeyed God in 1 Samuel 15. And look at what the man of God tells him in 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion, it is as the sin of witchcraft, 
And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also hath rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I, Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. What do we do when the new gets old? Number one, build an altar. Number two, keep obeying God. We ought to obey God even when we don't feel like it. When things get old, that's when it's time to just keep on doing what you did when things were new. The Bible still says, even when it's old in your life, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. The Bible still says, when it's new as well as when it's old, husbands, love your wives. The Bible still says, when it's new as well as when it's old in our life, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The Bible still says, when it's new as well as when it's old in our life, you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The Bible still says when it's new as well as when it's old in our life, servants, employees, be obedient to them which are your master employers. And we could go on and on, but I just want to say this. Feelings cannot control our life. Feelings are the caboose. We don't even see cabooses anymore. Here in our town we have one as kind of a museum uptown. So but, but feelings, feelings they're, they're at the end of the train. Fact is the engine. Faith is the middle card. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is fact. The Word of God is what guides my life. And uh, the faith comes, I'm going to trust God. And at the back is the caboose. And guess what? The caboose is left off the train in this generation. Why? In, in this sense, uh, because feelings, we don't, even, it, we don't need to worry about feelings. It's just a matter of God said it, that settles it. No matter how I feel today or tomorrow, God said, love my spouse. God said, raise my children right. God said, work hard. God said, show up to church. God said, serve the Lord in your life. God said, serve one another. So what do I do uh, when the new begins to get old, preacher? Number one, build an altar. Get on your face before God and say, God, restore unto me the freshness and the joy that I once had in this particular area of my life. Uh, number two, just keep obeying God. Even when you wake up and absolutely do not feel like it you just keep doing exactly what you're supposed to be uh, doing number three is this three and four and we're done what to do when the new gets old number three listen to the right people listen to the right people uh, look at first Samuel 24 if you still have your Bible open there so you know Saul you know things went south in his life it got old quick and uh, you, you know the story of David and how David was such a help and a blessing to Saul, but Saul was mad at the world, and, and that included David. And Saul continues to chase after David and try to kill him. And, and uh, David had an opportunity to kill Saul, but he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't touch God's anointed. But David said this to Saul in 1 Samuel 24 and verse number 9. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, The old David seeketh thy hurt. David said, I'm not trying to hurt you, king. He said, I, I don't know who you're listening to, but why would you listen to that crowd that's telling you lies? And I say this to us tonight. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. If the new has gotten old at your place of employment, I don't think I'd sit and have lunch with the lazy employees that hate the boss and are never going anywhere in life. Because why? You're going to join that crowd of critics. It, and I'm, I'm not trying to be unkind tonight, but, but if the new has gotten old in your marriage, do you really think you should be getting counsel from someone who's been, some brother or sister been divorced three times and can't keep a marriage together? Is that really the crowd you should listen to right now? Should you really listen to the men who are Tarzan and think that all they do is earn a paycheck but they don't know how to take care of a wife and kids? Hey man, is that really the person you ought to listen to for advice on how to make your marriage new again? 
Hey, lady, should you really be listening to the sister or the aunt or the mom who all they do is hate on their husband and talk bad about their husband and talk negative about their husband? Is that really who you should be listening to if you want to make it new again? Be careful who you listen to. What do we do when new gets old? Number one, build an altar. Say, Lord, I, I've just lost the joy of it all. God, I, I want it back. I want the joy back. If you said live joyfully with the wife of thy youth all the days of thy, uh, thy, thy, thy life, then, Lord, I, 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 I want to have that joy. It's possible then. Number one, build an altar. Number two, keep obeying God on the days that you don't want to. On the days that you say, well, I'm tired of trying in this area. Then it's not a matter of trying. It's, a matter of just, it's just a matter of reading our marching orders and saying, I'm going to keep doing exactly what God wants me to do until he brings me through this valley uh, in my life. Hey, listen to the right people. You know they're out there. You know there are people that can give you great advice on being a good parent. You know there are people that give you great advice on being a good godly uh, spouse and leader uh, in your home. Listen to the right people. And then lastly, number four is this. Depend, depend upon the one who has the power to make all things new. Depend upon the one who has the power to make all things new. You see, if Saul had just depended upon God in every area uh, of his life, uh, then I believe he would have gotten through and, and would have obeyed God and he would have been blessed. When David fought Goliath for Saul, David said, I, I'm not, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, I'm not coming to you with spear and sword. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. God's the one that's going to do this. When Saul's own son, Jonathan, went to fight against the enemy that his dad wouldn't fight against, Jonathan told his armor bearer, he said, uh, he said it's not, uh, it, it, and, I, and I can't quote it, but he said in the passage there, he said, it, it's not for God to save by many or by few. It doesn't matter how many there are. If we just have faith in God, God's going to fight this battle uh, for us. So those guys knew who to depend upon. And I want to say to us tonight as we end the message, if the old has gotten, if, if the new has gotten old in some area of your life, hey, build an altar. Get on your face before God. Ask him to help you. He doesn't want you to quit your job every three weeks. He certainly doesn't want you to walk away from your marriage. If, if the new has gotten old, you know what you do? You just keep obeying God. You keep doing what God said in his word. If the new has gotten old, let me encourage you, listen to the right people. David said, Saul, I'm not after you. You're listening to the wrong crowd. And then number four, and lastly, if the new has gotten old, depend upon the one who has the power to make all things new. The Bible tells us this. One of these days when we get to heaven. And then the tribulation period takes place here on earth. And then we come uh, back with the Lord for the uh, millennial reign of Christ here on earth. And then when we, when we are in heaven forever. The Bible says this in Revelation 21. In verse number 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Thank the Lord for that day. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Hey, if God can make all things new then, I believe he can make all things new in your life today. God, I'm just going to keep obeying you and doing right. And I'm going to keep asking you, Lord, and trusting you to give me that feeling of newness once again. You say, preacher, we're not supposed to live by feelings. That's right. You missed the first part. I'm just going to keep trusting your word and doing right. I'm just going to take the fact of your word and I'm going to live by faith and I'm going to trust you with my life. But Lord, I would like the feeling of freshness and newness back again in these areas and I believe that if we'll do those things, I believe God will restore unto us the joy of our salvation, the joy of being a part of a church family, the joy of our church ministry, the joy of our marriage, the joy of parenting, the joy of our work, the joy of our schoolwork. Let me ask you this question tonight. 
has the newness worn off in some area of your life? If so, what do we do? Build an altar. Keep obeying God. Listen to the right people. Depend upon the one who has the power to make all things new. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you tonight and as we live our life here on earth, however many years you give each one of us, there are days when things seem new and fresh and we're excited. And yet there are still those days when it just kind of gets old. And different areas of our life maybe become stressful. Maybe we go through some rough patches. Maybe we go through some valleys. Lord, may we end those days, in those times, may we not just build an altar, but already have an altar where we spend daily time with you. And God, I pray that we'll cry out to you and ask you to help us not to quit, help us not to give up. And God, I pray that we'll just go through those valleys and those times of oldness. I pray that we'll go through them and just continue to obey you and trust you and, and follow your word in every area of our life. And God, I pray that during those times, and even in the good times, and the newness times, I pray that God will listen to the right people. A companion of fools shall be destroyed, you said. So Lord, help us to walk with wise men and get good godly counsel. And then Lord, most of all, I pray that as we're doing those things, we'll just depend upon you who can make all things new in creation. And Lord, I believe you can make all things new in our life, in every area of our life, every day. So help us to enjoy every area. And uh, Lord, you said you want us to live life uh, to the fullest. And you've given us all things richly to enjoy. That includes our church, our family, our marriage, our kids, our jobs. So Lord, help us. When, when the new wears out, when the new becomes old, help us to do those things to bring the newness back. Bless, I pray in Jesus' name. So you'll play a verse of invitation. And I hope that there at your seat, the Lord has maybe spoke to your heart tonight about maybe some area or a couple of areas. Maybe all of us in our church, maybe the, maybe the newness wore off as a church family. Maybe our heirs of ministry, the newness wore off. Just became habitual to do what we did. And God said, okay, I'm going to take it away for a while. So when you step foot back in that church and it's going full speed ministry-wise, you'll have that newness back in your heart and that joy back. God wants you to have that in your marriage. God wants you to have that as a parent. God wants you to have that as a young person. God wants you to have that as an employee. He wants you to have that in your salvation. All right, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us today as we preach God's Word to you. I hope that, uh, I hope that you'll continue to, to think about these things. Think about the message this morning. And oh, how we, we all need that. We all, every one of us need to humble ourselves. And um, then tonight, things get old. We get worn out. We get tired. But there are some steps I believe we could take when the new gets old. Hey, we'll pray for you this week. Another week. Let's look at it this way. A week ago, uh, I walked out of the pulpit last Sunday night, and that's when they told us that the news uh, that I guess President Trump had asked for another 30 days, and I'll be honest with you, that hit me really, really hard. I mean, that stuck me like a dagger. And I, I really struggled with that for a couple of days because I want to be together, and I want our church to be together, and I want us to move forward in ministry. Uh, but God has it all under control. And uh, to be honest with you, in my life, it seems like this week now, standing here on another Sunday night has gone by quickly. And so let's pray that it does. Let's take care of one another. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Protect yourself the best you can. Let's provide for needs as, as needed. We'll be back Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And be back, uh, Lord willing, in the Psalms. We'll be on that prayer uh, conference call together after that. And what a blessed time uh, that, that uh, will be again. Uh, so hang in there. And uh, God's doing something. And I believe we're going to see some great, great days ahead. Remember, as a church, that our theme this year is focused. It's focused. And I think when we, when we came up with that theme, I don't think God was saying, you know, I think now that they came up with that theme, I want to throw something in their way. 
I believe God wants us to stay focused on our walk with Him and uh, focused on, on our family and our, and our future and so forth. So let's do that and uh, look forward to the day we can uh, get together again. All right, let's pray together and be dismissed. Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your book. Thank you, Lord, that we can take it and preach it. We can read it. We can study it. We can find uh, truths from the Old Testament that apply to our life today. Bless us. Help us this week, I pray. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.